Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So in this video, I wanna show you how you can actually start contributing to open source projects. And more specifically, I have a project opened up here called Mumble, and this is a project that Dennis Ivey is working on. So if you don't know who that is, he's another YouTuber. Check him out, check out his channel, he's got good stuff. But I'm gonna show you how you can fork this project, create your own branch, basically make a couple of changes, and then commit those to your own branch onto your forked repo and then push those changes in something that we call a pull request to this branch here so that people who are managing this project can review your code changes and merge it into the master branch on this mumble project. So I said a lot of keywords and hopefully it's not too overwhelming, but I'm gonna to try to walk you through this. First off, we are looking at the upstream like master branch, okay? So this is Dennis Ivy's repo. And if you wanted to contribute to it, what you should probably do is fork it. So if you look up here in the top right, there is a fork button here. So if you click on the fork button, it's going to basically tell you, hey, which account do you want to fork this to? And I'll select my own personal account here. And when you do that, it's going to create pretty basically a clone of the Dennis Ivy slash Mumble repo and put it on your own GitHub account. So if you notice here, I have a new project, but now it's a Cody Cybert slash Mumble project, okay? So once you've done that, what you can do is you can clone this repo down into your laptop. So if you click on this code green button, I'm gonna use SSH and click on this copy button, but you can use HTTPS if you want to. Uh, I have my SSH key set up already, so I'm gonna use this one. So click on this copy and then go ahead and go over to your editor. Okay, so I have a folder I'm gonna do this into and I can type git, let me zoom in. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this into a folder called demo. So I'm gonna say git clone, and I'm gonna paste in that URL that we just talked about. And that is basically gonna clone down the entire repo from your forked repo, okay? So at this point, you can type a couple of commands just to make sure you got it. You can type git status. Actually, let me um, let me do an ls and cd into that project and I'm gonna open it up. All right, so at this point, I have VS Code pointed to that mumble folder. And what we wanna do is basically make a couple of changes, make a new branch, and then make a PR. I'll show you all the, all the process in a second. Just to make sure this is working, make sure you have git installed. I'm gonna say git status, and that'll print out what current branch you're on. So if you see here, it says you're on branch master. Um, you can also do some other things like git log just to see like the history of the current branch you're at. But a lot of this stuff is kind of more advanced, so I'm not gonna really get into it. But So let me go ahead and take you through the flow of you wanna make a small change on a your own branch and then get that into the upstream master branch, okay? So let's just say that there's something in like a readme or a file that we wanted to change. What we could do is open up that file and go ahead and just make that change. Uh, but typically before you make any changes, make sure you check out a new branch. So what you could do here is I could say git checkout hyphen B and that'll create a new branch and I can name it whatever I want. So I could just say testing, um, demo or something doesn't really matter what you name it but typically you want to name the branch something that is related to the issue that you're working on so i'm going to go ahead and click enter here that'll create a new branch and now if i type git branch that'll show me the two branches that i have access to here okay so i have a master branch locally on my computer and i have a testing demo one which is the one we just created so at this point you can kind of go through all your code and make changes you could like change something in the readme or you can maybe modify some front end code, maybe modify the React code, change some styling. And as you make different changes to your uh, your project, let me just go ahead and do something really simple, like add a space here and save it. Notice that your editor should hopefully highlight the files that you've changed. And if you wanna get more in depth, there is a source control tab here in VS Code you can use. And you can kind of click through to see like what has changed in the file. Now at this point, all the changes that you make are not staged. So what that means is basically there's like another flow, like another column or a flow chart where you basically take all the files that you want to be added or committed and you have to add them individually. So as you change a bunch of different files, so if I were to go in and change like another file here, I just put some characters here. Notice that if I type git status in my terminal, it's gonna show that two files have been modified, but those aren't going to be committed yet. So Basically, as you make changes, you can add them to your stage. And then once you've decided that those are the things you want to commit, you can commit your stage and basically work from there. So, so just to kind of show you some more stuff, I'm going to go ahead and revert the contributing one because I just don't want to modify this file. So in your VS Code editor, you can just click this little back button and say discard changes if you want. You could also do it in the terminal down here if you want to. But um, So at this point, let's just try to add 
those changes. So if you go here, you can click the plus icon to add that change or that file to your stage, or you can type in git add. So down here, I can say git add readme. Uh, I like to do things in my terminal, but a lot of people probably use the VS Code editor. But notice when I typed it in my terminal down here, my VS Code editor said that that file is now staged. So at this point, you can commit this change in something called a commit to your Git repository, okay? And again, you can do this in your terminal, which is what I'm going to do, or you can do it up here. You can basically type in a message that explains what you did in that particular small chunk of change. Um, I'm going to say git commit. I'll do dash m for a message and said testing out changing a readme. So after I press enter, it's going to take everything that's in my stage um, workspace, I guess you could say, and put it in a commit and put that into the repo. So if I do git log, so if you notice here in the git log, that latest commit here, testing out changing a readme is saved here. And that generates something called a SHA, which is like a unique identifier to know like what files have changed. So if I were to kind of like revert back in history, I can revert those changes I made and keep kind of popping off those changes and go back in time if I wanted to. But that is kind of for an advanced discussion. So at this point, we made a branch locally. We added some files to our stage workspace, and then we committed them in a git commit. Now we need to actually push those changes from our local repo to the remote repo. So I can say git push origin, and I can type in the branch that I want to push. So before I do that, let me talk about what origin is. So if you type in git remote hyphen v, that is going to print out all the different remote like URLs that your local workspace can potentially connect to. Okay, so I could have my repo connect to other people's forks. I could have it connect to Dennis Ivy's fork, or I guess main fork or main repo. And I can kind of push changes to those different forks if I have permission. In this case, we just have a origin setup, right? So typically when you see commands, you see like git push origin. That's just the default. So when you clone your repo down, or clone your fork, you're going to basically be pushing things to your origin. So basically to your GitHub here. But you can add more things in here and you could push them to like an upstream branch if you want to. That's kind of more advanced and I'll show you that in a second. So let's just go ahead and push this to that same branch. So I'm going to type in a git status, get the branch that we're working off of, and I'm going to say git push origin and type in that branch name. So at that point we pushed our commit and all the changes that were on our branch to that remote that I talked about. Um, let me just show you that one more time. So I pushed all the changes to this repo, which happens to be at this location, Cody Cyber slash mumble dot git. And now if I refresh, actually I might do it live, but you can see here, it says a de testing demo branch has been pushed less than a minute ago. Okay. So now all the changes I did on my local laptop has actually been pushed across the internet to GitHub. So at that point, you can continue to do this process. I could keep making changes, keep adding them to my stage workspace and then commit them. And I can do that over and over and over again and keep pushing them to my remote branch. And at some point you want to say like, hey, this feature is probably done or I fixed the bug. I want to go ahead and bundle that up and try to send it off to Dennis Ivy's main repo. Um, so what you can do is you can go into GitHub and click on compare and pull request. And that is going to basically bundle up all the changes that you did. And you can kind of like write a description here, like what you worked on or what bug this might fix or what feature you might have added. But the important part here is make sure you have um, Dennis Ivy's mumble branch. So notice again, you can push this to whatever repo you want. I can make a pull request and send it to any of these people. Um, but we want to do it to Dennis Ivy's main Git repo and more specifically his master branch. And this is just like the branch that we're pushing from. So in this case, it's my repo in the testing demo branch. So I'm going to go ahead and click create pull request. And at that point, you notice that my page redirected to Dennis Ivy's repo here. Okay. So all of our changes, if I were to go into this pull request tab, you'll notice that it shows that pull request that I created and I can just go ahead and click on that. And if I go into this pull request, you'll see that I basically have a description here. What I changed, I should probably fill this stuff out and just it's not that big of a deal though. And I can click files change and it shows me a change log of everything that I committed to my local fork and pushed over in a pull request. So you see here, it just added a space, nothing else changed. So at this point, what happens is someone who's maintaining this open source project will come through maybe in an hour or in a day, give them some time. They might be busy. They have their own lives, but they're going to review your code. They might leave some comments on your changes 
And if they do leave comments, you then have to basically go back to your code base, make some changes, add them, commit them, push them to your fork branch. Okay, so the same process I showed you earlier, you're just gonna make a change, do a git add, do a git commit, and then do a git push origin and then the branch. So at this point, if you've addressed all the changes that the open source maintainer wants you to fix, then they might come through and say, okay, this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and approve it. Um, I can't really approve my own, but someone else would approve your PR and then they would typically come down here and just merge it for you. So I am one of the maintainers on this project. So what I would do here is basically just say squash and merge. And when I do that, it's gonna basically take your commit and it's gonna put it on the master branch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. All right, so now at this point, if I go into Dennis Ivy's master branch, we can see that a change happened by Cody Seibert called testing out changing a readme. And if I click on this, we can see the changes that were kind of pushed onto that master branch. So that was the first piece of it. But often when you're working on open source projects, a lot of changes are gonna happen on the master branch, right? You might start working on something on your own local copy on your laptop, and it might take you a couple of days to kind of work on your bug or your feature. And by that time, there's been a lot of changes that were pushed to the master branch. So what you wanna do in the meantime is you wanna set up your repo to be able to connect to then it's Ivy's GitHub repo, okay? So if you remember here, I'm gonna do the git remote V again. We only have one remote set up. We need to set up yet another remote and point it to Dennis Ivy's repo. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say git add remote. Actually, I'm sorry, you should do git remote add. Type in, um, in this case, typically you do upstream. That's just a name that we typically use for like the, the main master repo. And then you type in the URL of that upstream repo. So I'm gonna say git at github.com colon type in Dennis Ivy's profile mumble.git. So now, so now you see I have two remotes set up. I have my origin and then I also have my upstream. So remember we just approved the PR and we just merged it into master. Well, now there's changes on the master branch off of Dennis's branch, okay? so. Often we need to grab those changes from the upstream branch and pull them into our local working copy here. So what I could do is say git fetch and then type in the remote. So I'm gonna say upstream. So what that's gonna do is basically grab all the latest changes from you know whatever branch that happens to be on Dennis Ivy's uh, main repo and pull them to your local copy here. And what you wanna do next is you wanna take the changes off of master and kind of update your master to reflect that. So one way you can make your master branch match Dennis's Ivy's latest master branch is you could do a git reset, okay? So I'm gonna do a git checkout on master and that's gonna basically check out my origin master, which you can see here. I think if you do a git checkout and you leave out like the remote, it's gonna pick origin for you. So now I can show you we are on the master branch of my origin repo, so that's my fork repo. And if I do a git log, you'll notice that there's no log related to that test readme file I changed, right? So I need to pull those changes from Dennis's repo and kind of merge them into mine. So one way you can make your copy match Dennis's copy is by doing a git reset. So I'm gonna say git reset hard, and I'm gonna say upstream slash master. So that's gonna take the upstream remote, which happens to be Dennis's repo, and it's gonna take all those changes and basically make my master branch reflect those changes. So now if you see here, it says the head is now pointed at testing out changing a readme. And if I do git log, that's gonna show me that commit. But at this point, those changes are still not on our fork. So let me go to my repo myself, go to Cody Seibert slash mumble. And you can see that my master branch is still one commit behind Dennis's master branch. So at this point, what we need to do is just do a git push origin master and I do believe you need to do a hyphen force actually you might not need to so basically now if I go to github and refresh this page it says this branch is even with Dennis's master branch okay so a quick recap of what we just did we basically saw that there are changes on Dennis's master branch we did a git fetch to basically grab all those changes and then we checked out our master branch and then we reset our master branch's head to match Dennis's master branch's head, all right? And then we pushed those changes to our master branch. So it's kind of confusing and there's probably easier ways to do it like using this built-in source control um, 
tool or feature, but I like using the command line. I feel like it gives me more power or flexibility to do different things, but that's basically the process. It is kind of confusing at first. It's a lot to kind of take in at first, but really you just repeat those steps. If you write those steps down on like a readme, it's like what, four or five steps, six steps. You literally just go through those steps before you actually start working on some new work. Make sure you have the latest off of Dennis's master. Make sure that your master matches Dennis's by going in here and checking that. If this is saying that you're kind of behind in versions, you probably want to grab the latest off of Dennis's master and reset yours to match Dennis's. So one last little bit of information. Technically, if you have permissions to push things directly to Dennis's branch, like I do because he gave me permissions, you can do a git um, push. And instead of saying origin, I could say upstream master or something like that. And that'll basically take all my changes that are local on my laptop and push them to Dennis's master. Now, typically, no one else is going to be doing this. If you are someone who doesn't have access to the repo, you should create a pull request, go through that whole process to make sure it gets approved and merged in. And even me, myself, I shouldn't be pushing changes to the master branch directly. Um, but sometimes we do just because we want to speed the process up a little bit, although it's not necessarily the proper way to do things. But just note that if you try to do something, you don't have permissions, it might warn you and tell you, hey, you don't have access to this repo or something. So just remember that you can't push to Dennis's upstream master because you don't have permissions. Everything always needs to be pushed to your origin. And then your origin, you have to create a pull request and mer merge your branch changes into Dennis's ma uh, master branch. All right, I hope this helped you out a little bit if you were kind of new to Git and how you might want to use like the Git flow to make a pull request and merge changes. If you have any comments about something I might have missed or you want me to elaborate on, leave me a comment below. I could try to help you out. And then also, if you're new to this channel, be sure to click that subscribe button because I'm at other videos like this in the future that should hopefully help you become a better web developer. All right. Have a good day. Happy coding.